Greetings, folks. Welcome back to the Tractor Fella channel, where we know nothing about tractors. On today's episode, we're going to continue with part two of the sweet little mini chopper made by APC, Armored Personnel Carrier, American Petroleum Company, or perhaps a piece of crap. Either way, let's stop talking and let's dive in. First order of business, we are creating a new fuse holder uh, out of pure creativity, because why not? Thought I had another tube style one hanging out in my uh, miscellaneous parts, but I cannot find it. So we're going to play with this for a little bit. And that's the end of that. Yeah, we'll see if we can salvage this endeavor. Well, gee, that might just work as it is. Why did I tape that together before I put the wires in there? Whatever. It's my first day today. Let's get these out of here. She go. And she go. Let's get some strippage going on. Let's get these babies on here. And let's do the same thing to this guy. There we go. They are on. So now I'm going to put the fuse in there. Our 10 amp specialty. Yes, I know. This is kind of ridiculous. It's pretty exciting watching me wrap tape, huh? Yep. It's going to be a good episode. I can feel it. Comes out. Goes back in. And we're going to find a great spot to zip tie that. Do some zip tie action right here. You know what's going to happen. I'm going to secure this in place. And I'm going to find out that there's something that goes right here in this region that's going <laughs> to get right in the way. Let's avoid cutting the harness. I'm using this so it doesn't leave a nasty point. Somebody mentioned something about flush cut side cutters. I'm going to have to look into those. There we go. Folks, I think we're in business. All right, I spent entirely too much time on that. Let's find something else to play with. Can you tell I was looking for stuff? <laughs> Good news is that fuse holder probably only cost me a couple of bucks because one, the fuse was probably 10 cents because I bought this Winlin 272 piece set of fuses. So now I have all the fuses. So that's a dime for the fuse, maybe 50 cents for the tape. And then the scrap metal I got out of here, just like this little guy here. Anyway, enough jabbering. For that previous video, put the Winland price somewhere, whatever, with the little ching -ching -ching sound as well. Love you. From me. <laughs> so before I go and order a carb kit, I think what I want to do, I don't know if you remember or if you skipped that part, but I bent the little fuel tab down that the button touches. And I'm curious if that did anything. So I'm going to bend it back. Still seems really rich, because this screw right here is only out a quarter turn. Oh no, that's what I was afraid of. Well, it wouldn't be an episode if I didn't spill something, right? I'd say it's darn near level. I don't know, folks. I don't think there's any reason for me to adjust it. All right, well, let's put it back together. That was a waste of time. So I did make a slight adjustment to put it back to sort of where it was. I'm sure that's going to destroy everything that we've worked for. Ignish on fuel. Free and go. Maybe I found the sweet spot. I don't know. I can't stand it. We have to take a ride. Let's see if it makes any mustard <clears throat> or if it's completely gutless. I'm gonna guess gutless. I have the seat just sitting on here, <clears throat> not actually hooked up. <laughs> Man, these handlebars are really high. All right, power and go. Will it move? Absolutely not. Here we go. APC mini chopper, carburetor. Yes, I did a search already, that's why it's purple. Look at this, 15 millimeter. Does that not look like exactly what we need? Oh, that looks identical. 
Hey, what do you know? A truck's going by. How surprising. We've got the slide in the middle, We've got the fuel ports. Oh, we even have measurements. Okay, 10 bucks for a new carb. When I did the Weed Whacker video, a few of you said, you can buy a whole new carb for super cheap. Rebuilding is kind of silly. So we'll try it this way. Fingers crossed. Almost forgot reviews. If you have a random off-brand China mini bike, chances are this will fit. Went on no issues and only needed a little adjustment on the fuel air mix. Starts like new. Well, yep, just to be sure, we've got this little guy here. Is that one and a quarter-ish? Esque? One and a quarter. Let's see here. 1.25 inches to millimeters. 31. That's it, folks. It's going to fit. Whoop, whoop. Welcome back, folks. It's a new day. So I pulled out the old battery. Maybe with any luck, I can pull these rubber shields back, melt the solder, take the solder off, and then plug this into the power wheel charger. Let's give it a shot, shall we? So I got the shields pulled back. And by shields, I mean the insulators. And by insulators, I mean the shrink wrap. Now I'm going to fire up the Berkling. We're going to melt these wires off of here. Oh, oh yeah. This is called a solder sucker. Essentially, you melt the solder and sucks the solder out. Oh yeah, now we're boiling. There we go. We'll just smooth that out for next time. You guys wanna see something cool? Charged up the power wheel battery. Went ahead and hooked up the wires to the uh, terminals there. Think it's gonna go? Break. <laughs> it's amazing. Oh, the electric start works. Did some research. This is a motor and generator. It acts as a starter, kind of like on a golf cart. And then when it's fired up, it uh, acts as a charger or a generator, whatever the heck you want to call it. I also have the, uh, the original factory battery on the charger just to see what happens. Maybe it'll come back. Probably not. All right, we get it. Old one's out. Who's ready to put the new one in? And yes, they are identical. $10, folks. $10. I'm sorry for those of you overseas fans who are not able to get things from the Rainforest site for as cheap as we are. Hopefully one of these days that will change for you. Also, I notice we have this hole here. This is the side that goes against the air filter housing, and it doesn't line up to anything. Although there is a hole. This one came with a gasket, which is nice, but um, I don't know. Maybe that's for a different application? Oh my gosh. I just found the choke. It was on here the whole time. That's it. Now I know for a fact that was not closed. So that was not our issue. Well, I guess at least we know where the choke is. Now maybe I can find something to uh, put on there. Maybe a little screw in the back? I don't know. All right. Anyway, welcome back. It's a new day, by the way. So I just had an apostrophe, and it hit me pretty hard. So first of all, we originally thought that this rubber seal went against the engine. And then this surface went against the air filter. That's how it was installed when I received the little bike. However, wouldn't it make a little more sense to have the rubber seal butt up to here? Wouldn't it also make sense to inspect the actual engine housing? Well, have a look at that. Wouldn't you know it, the previous owner installed it backward. I didn't do an inspection, and I also reinstalled it backward. That also means that this hole right here is most likely the pulse port that the carburetor gets to run the fuel pump, which explains why we were starving for fuel with the original carburetor, which also means there's a high probability that I bought a new carburetor when I didn't have to actually buy a new carburetor. How about that? Shall we do a quick recap? I know, listening to my voice is super exciting. First, we had an electronics issue. The ignition was not wired correctly. 
It was not giving us the proper amount of spark. Don't know how that worked. Don't know at all. Fix that. We then had a ridge condition, which <laughs> makes no sense to me. We had a ridge condition because we started leaning up the mixture screw and that's when the engine took off. But then it was acting like it was starving for fuel. I then sat on it, and if you noticed, it would initially try to go and then fall on its face. And I'm curious if that's because that pulse port was not being used for anything. Let's install the new one first, because I'm going to keep it regardless. And then we'll come back and install the old one and see what happens. Sound like a deal? All right, shake on it. Sounds good, Aaron. Yeah, Aaron, you got it. Okay, cool. Thanks, guys. Oh. Let's get our little cover here. I figure if I really fall in love with this thing that much, I will, uh, well, first I'll put this in the correct way. I'll buy a new air filter cover for it, or a whole new filter housing, actually. Oh, are you kidding me? You gotta be kidding me. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's not even funny anymore. Puddle of gas. Today's torquing device is the calibrated elbow. Perfect. I love when things come together. Remember how we kept all that extra line? Kind of worked out in our favor, didn't it? Release the Kraken. It is a beautiful day today, and it is a beautiful day for a little mini bike ride. Well, primer works. That's a bonus. Choke. Ignition switch. We'll just tuck that in there. Cross your fingers. You ready to make poor choices? Also, I checked the gear case, it was a little low. Evident from probably this. Weepage going on here. Um, I read online it said to use a light oil, so I used 1540, should be light enough. Okay, let's go take the hog for a ride. If she'll move us. Oh yeah. You know, this would be a blast at like a a racing event or something like that where everyone bobs around on go-karts you got yourself your little mini bike pit bike oh, like it's brand new super steady mode is engaged let's rip I'll tell you what guys that was uh that was fun um scary a little bit a little bit scary but uh definitely fun i'd like to get those twins back on there i wish somebody hadn't gone through with the can of flat black that they had in the garage and just randomly sprayed all this stuff
Come on. Come on. Come on. Okay, drop. Drop, drop, no. No tug of war, drop, good boy. Here we go. Hercules, cut it out. All right, one more time. Nope, back, drop, 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 back, back, back. Thank you. You ready? Here we go. <laughs> Ding! Unfortunately, Titan is, uh, I think he's seven. Hercules, cut it out. Hercules, drop. He's getting a little older, and German Shepherds, well, when they get older, their joints aren't exactly the best. So he'll go play and fetch and run and then pop a tendon and he'll whine and yelp and then start limping back to us. So we play a little more gently these days, even though he doesn't care how many joints he injures. But I guess that's a dog for you. All right. We have this little guy that came from the factory with burnt ends, we'll call it. And I found these little guys hiding in my drawer that happened to fit a little baby battery just fine. So what do you say we modify this little guy and make it work? I wonder if we can get away with just crimping. Let's see if we can do a little pinch and a tickle to finish the job. Wow, that might have done it. <laughs> yeah, let's throw a little solder on there just for kicks. <laughs> Warning, do not use on live circuits. <laughs> Thank you for the tip. Hold your breath. It might be hideous, but it's going to be useful. And now, no one will ever be able to see my horrible soldering job. <laughs> All right, we have the ability to swap batteries without having to solder and unsolder batteries. Because that, my friends, is ridiculous. Bam, Bob is officially my uncle. Think it'll work? Let's find out. Ignish. We got all of the torque on this hog. Welcome back, folks. It's a new day. I came out here to find a nice wet spot underneath our lovely little machine here and an empty fuel tank. Great. That's, that's really great. Put some more gas in there, hoping to duplicate the problem. The dribble on the bottom of this line here. Itchy? I'm a little bummed. I was looking forward to coming out here and working on something other than the fuel system. Yeah, it's not looking too promising. Doggone it. Brand new carburetor. Spent a whopping $10 on it. Guess you get what you pay for, right? Well, here we go. Let's see what joyous things we can come up with. I see immediate amounts of fuel wetness in there. Let's open her up. Yeah, oh geez, yeah, it's soaked. There's still fuel coming down there. Did you see that? Lovely. Last thing I want to do is crack open a brand new carburetor because all the seals are technically 
supposed to only be used once, even though we here at the Tractor Fella Carburation Station reuse the gaskets all the time. Who knows, maybe we had some debris in the fuel line. It's also a possibility, and it got in between our needle and seat. Trying to keep optimistic here, folks. Trying to stay optimistic. Yeah, check it out. That one's got a big nip on it, too. As far as I can tell, everything looks brand new and fantastic. H15. No idea what that stands for. Yeah, that little guy's sticking up above proud, is it not? Above proud. It's sticking up too high. <laughs> so let's go ahead and adjust that a little bit, shall we? Maybe that's our problem. Like I said, thing only costs 10 bucks, so you can't really expect too much. Should be using this guy. There is a bit of a line on the tip of this needle. And do a little bit of a wipe off here. Hmm. Well, we'll try it again, see what happens. I'm still thinking that this is sticking up a little bit too much. Let's just bend that guy down ever so slightly. Right about like that. Well, that's not... I don't like that. It sticks. I don't like that at all. When I took it out, it had a, f a little bit of a fold in here. It's like it was compressed. Maybe that's another issue. Now that it's been exposed to fuel, perhaps it has stretched somehow. So let's reseat it. Take it off. Lay it back on there flat. Maybe that'll do something as well. I don't, I don't know. I'm just trying some stuff here. Okay, here comes my favorite part. Spring needle screw. Got it. There we go. Now we're not so proud. We're sticking level with the surface. Definitely plenty of action still, pulling up on that needle. Let me get this all put back together and I will bring you back. All right, I pulled a fast one. I took the original carb, modified the uh, little rocker for the needle, put it back on here. Let's see if it makes a difference. I'm curious. Let's see if we can electric start it cold with no choke action. original car woken up it's uh, definitely a little peppier than the new one very interesting well now what do I do do I put the new one back on just so I can validate it's not leaking fuel when I shut it off because that would be super boring but I think that's what we have to do but first 
we're gonna have to let this one sit and validate it doesn't leak fuel out the intake either. I gotta tell you folks, I feel kind of silly. It's one of those things I should have uh, should have taken a little more attention to detail. Oh well, you live and you learn, right? So I think my next task, I'm gonna try to figure out what to do with this. I think buying a new muffler would probably be the, <laughs> the best course of action, considering the fact I don't know what is coming out of here. Should probably just order a new one. I think I saw one for $15 on the Electronic Bay. There's a good chunk, what is this? That's, is that rust powder or dirt powder? Looks like it's dirt, what in the world? It's very possible this thing's totally plugged. Oh no, it's not plugged at all. It's easy to blow through there. I mean, that doesn't really do anything anymore. It's all pretty much completely blown out. I'm gonna think about this for a minute. You know, maybe I could do something as completely ridiculous as to weld this up. I mean, I have really poor welding skills to begin with. The addition of all these combustible liquids should really help with that. Plus, it's it's super thick, so I shouldn't have any issues blowing through it, right? Oh, why not? Let's try it out. I need to improve my skills anyway. I bought these guys from Benchmark Abrasives. This is one of those deals on the Book of Faces where uh, it's totally free except $10 shipping. So I paid $10 shipping and I got two packages of, well, quite a few. Got two rolls of five. It was funny, it came in the package, it said, Packaged truly for you by Mad Mike or someone like that. Got my Economy Freight bench grinder here. And definitely doing safety glasses for this. Aaron, why exactly are you about to do what you're about to do? Well, folks, what's the worst case scenario? I ruin this? Well, that flapper disc is a winner. Oh, battery too low to use flash. What do you know? I have no idea where these safety glasses came from that I'm wearing. But they almost have a slight magnification to them. Which is nice, because I can see a little better. Alright, I'm going to play with this lost cause for a little bit. And then I'll bring you back when it's disaster time. Welcome back, folks. It's a new day. We're going to try our luck. <laughs> it's, it's probably not going to be great luck, but... Uh, I'm still excited to try, because why not? All right, put on your welding goggles, please. Oh boy. It's, uh, it's hideous, but uh, I actually have figured out the technique that works for me. Extremely short bursts because my welder does not have a finite adjustment on temperature, it's notches. So I have to do little, little teeny bursts to get it to, uh, yeah, to get it to fill, so. Yeah, she ugly. I'll bring you back when we're done. Yep, yep, it's chunky. It's really chunky. What I found that worked best is once I established some material, then I was able to build off of that. So, um, yeah, we're going to go ahead and hit it pretty hard <laughs> and uh, fix any spots we need to. Well, there we go. Got a nice interference fit. All right, so we have the muffler installed. We have the pipe installed with one of the two screws that was supplied. That was not even close to center. Neither was that. Better, closer, warmer. That's it. Okay, 
Welcome back, folks, to New and Beautiful. A couple of weeks later, actually. All right, so when we left off, I believe that I was working on welding this thing up really poorly. So I got it essentially reinforced, and that's about it. This has a bit of an interference fit. I drilled some holes that don't really line up very well. We can solve that problem with self-tapping screws that are way too long. But now you're wondering, well, how is this going to seal? Well, chances are it's not. It's probably going to leak like a sieve, or as I prefer, a colander, because I don't really have a clue what a sieve is. So we're going to do an experiment by creating our own crush washer using copper wire that you would find in your home wiring. First, we'll straighten it back out. And then we'll come in at an angle, chop that side at that angle, we'll chop the other side at the opposite angle, kind of like a piston ring. Okay, so we have our two angles, and then I'm going to quick take it to a sander. If this works, I'll be amazed. But it's fun to try, right? Yeah, that's right. All right, there it is. There's our overlap at the angle. This is semi-round. It fits on here. I'm going to bolt this back up to the... Uh, I keep wanting to call it a mower. <laughs> All right, let's bolt this back up to the engine. All right, I put the muffler back on. You've seen me put it back on and take it off probably 10 times. So we're going to go ahead and continue with our sweet gasket here. I'm going to position the crack up toward the top because that's a high spot. And we'll go ahead and put the one bolt that was on here back on. Now for the interesting part. Uh, this may not work very well at all. I think you all probably had an idea that that was going to happen. Oh yeah, that looks goofy. Don't want to squish it too much and bend the ears. We'll try that for a while. What do you think? 10, 15 minutes before it rattles apart? Primer. Definitely coming out the uh, the muffler. Some. All right, I took the ridiculous gasket back off. See what we get. That sounds like it's coming out of the back more. Honestly, I'll just go pick up a graphite gasket from somewhere. We'll call it a day. All right, I'm gonna go take a ride. Like my air filter setup? Oh yeah. <laughs> Welcome back folks. It's a new day. Thank you, Titan. Thank you, you're such a good helper. Mm -hmm. All right, bear with me for a second. I apologize for getting this out so late. You saw we lost the little red car because my wife was in an accident. We also have lost the Suburban because my wife was in a second accident, neither of which her fault. At this point, she doesn't even want to drive anymore because uh, the luck that has <laughs> the luck that has hit us is just wonderful. Holidays are fun, but stressful. Everyone's sick constantly. We're going to finish this episode with a 22 degree Fahrenheit cold start on the little APC chopper. See how she does. I have plans for it. I really do. I've never really fixed anything up. I think it'd be fun. Do maybe like a Super cheap restoration. I don't know if that's even worth it. Whatever. I'm just talking now. Let's fire this thing up. I'm going to soak up every bit of this sun that I can. You are such a good helper. Yes, you are. There we go. Thanks, Titan. All right. You know the routine. Ignish. Primer, a.k.a. purge, whatever the heck you want to call it. We do not have choke. Break and crank. Hopefully the battery still has life.
It's official. We could totally ride this in the snow. It'd be super safe as well. <clears throat> All right, folks, that's it for episode two. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for hanging on while it took me forever to get this episode out. And don't forget, if in the future you find yourself super bored and super desperate to watch something on YouTube, well, come on. You can hit that little guy right there. And come on back. We'll have more adventures. We'll see you then. Headbutt.